Hello, I'm happy to be speaking with you today about the state of UTA and a vision for the future. When I was appointed CEO by the UTA Board of Trustees a couple of months ago, I asked if I could take some time to do a listening tour. I wanted to reach out and meet with people who use our service, institutions, stakeholders, business leaders, riders, employees, and find out what they thought about the current state of the UTA organization and their ideas about where we should go. I've met with hundreds of people across our service area and I've ridden all of our modes of service and have had just a wonderful time meeting people and talking to them about how they use the UTA service to live their lives and get where they want to go. I'm honored to be serving as the UTA president and CEO and I'm humbled by the experience I've had meeting with employees, seeing how hard they work to provide a good service for our customers and just getting to know people and find out where they go on the UTA system. One of the people I met, I'll call him John, was on an early morning bus trip out of Salt Lake City. John's in his mid-50s, African-American, he was on his way to work. The first thing he told me was, well, I like the UTA, it's reliable, the drivers are friendly and helpful, but it doesn't go early enough. It seemed awful early to me, it was just after six in the morning, but he had a job where his boss expected him to be there at 545. He was happy to be riding UTA and he would likely be a daily UTA rider if our service worked better for him, but he knew he was going to have to find another way. His boss was going to work with him for the short term for the next week or so, but he was going to need to find a different way to get to work. John paid cash for his trip. He had a pocket full of schedules. When I asked him how he found out how to get where he was going, he said he talked to the drivers and that they were helpful and knowledgeable. This one example of a rider highlights a number of things that I've noticed in our system that I would identify as gaps or opportunities for us to provide a better service to our customers. John's trip was not very convenient. He had to take a bus, then a train, then another bus to get to his destination. Or he had to take a bus and backtrack about five miles into downtown Salt Lake to take a train heading back out. He paid cash because electronic payment systems just didn't work for him. So while there were some positive things in his experience, it wasn't going to work for him long term. And I was sad to find out that here's someone who was happy to be using UTA, would likely be a regular rider, but it just wasn't going to work for him. UTA is entering a new era. The era of our large capital construction projects is behind us. I'm going to be telling the straight truth about where we are today, but I want to leave you feeling optimistic and excited about a future for our agency. I want to create a vision for UTA that people can like and be proud of and support. A vision of an agency that's a leader and an innovator, but focused on the customer experience. In my listening tour, there were three themes that came up, and I'm going to use those themes to organize my description of the state of UTA and our vision going forward. The three themes I want us to focus on are people, money, and service. So let's begin with people. One of the things I found on my listening tour is that people want UTA to succeed. Our riders want a service that works for them, and they want more and better service. Stakeholders across the service area, including business leaders, education institutions, human service providers, rely on UTA to accomplish their mission. Since UTA was formed in 1970, our population has tripled from 1 million to just over 3 million now, and it's going to double again in the next 20 or 30 years. The people who ride our system have also changed over time. We see now that our riders tend to be younger. 59% of our riders are between the ages of 18 and 35. We've seen that the percentage of riders who have driver's licenses has dropped from 85% just five years ago to about 71%. Tend to come more from the lower part of the economic spectrum. Tend to use transit for lots of trips, not just for getting to school or getting to work. And they have travel needs that take them all over our service area, not just into central business districts. We have excellent partnerships with our stakeholders across the region. Our partnerships with the Department of Transportation and with municipal governments are very strong. We're fortunate in Utah to have a great relationship between the Transit Agency and the Department of Transportation. And the Metropolitan Planning Organizations do a great job of keeping all of the municipal governments working on the same page and working toward the same vision. UTA is fortunate to have a strong workforce, dedicated professional 
people who know their jobs and care about providing a good service to customers. When we compare the levels of professionalism and customer service that our bus operators give to other transit agencies in our benchmarking peer group, we find that consistently UTA operators provide a higher level of professionalism and customer courtesy. But I also heard that sometimes our employees are frustrated. They're not able to give the level of service they would like to give because sometimes things don't work right in the organization or they're not supported the way that they need to be. So when I think back to my conversation with John, he reflects some of the changes in our ridership. He wasn't headed to the downtown central business district, he was headed the other direction. He needed early morning service, and I hear from people they need late night service as well. He was paying with cash, and so all of our electronic systems were not providing a solution that worked for him. Fortunately, John was able to get the help from our bus operators to figure out our system. But he also is a good example of how complicated our transit system can be for someone to figure out how to get to their destination. Some of the gaps and opportunities I identified in the area of people include the need to provide more and better service. It includes our need to better support those employees who serve the customers to make sure they can give the best service possible. There's an opportunity for us to continue to broaden and leverage our partnerships with external stakeholders. So some of the initiatives that we'll be undertaking in 2017 include expanding our opportunities to engage with the public, to provide information more easily about changes that are coming, about how we make decisions at UTA, and providing a better and easier mechanism for the public and customers to give us input and feedback about things they'd like to see done better or differently. In the people area, we're still going to be focusing on our employees, making sure that we have competitive pay and benefits and that we provide development opportunities for them so they know how to do their job and if they're interested in advancement, they have a path to advance through the organization. We'll be reorganizing all of our personnel functions under a chief people officer and making structural changes in the organization to better align our management to support those who serve customers. We'll be looking for opportunities to expand our partnerships with our external stakeholders and a couple things that are getting ready to be launched include our Tiger Grant funded first and last mile project. That's a lot of words, but what it means is we're going to be working with 26 cities and six counties to provide improvements for people to get to transit. It could be things like sidewalks and curb cuts, pedestrian overpasses, bike lanes, shelters, stops, all kinds of ways to make it easier for people to get to and use transit safely. Another partnership that I'm excited about is the Transportation Land Use Connection Program with the Wasatch Front Regional Council. This is a program where we will be partnering with Wasatch Front to provide resources to cities to plan areas in their city around transit, to make a transit station or a transit-oriented development what the city really wants and needs in their area. Let me now move on to talk about money. Currently, UTA has a number of financial strategies that we've been engaged in to get through the end of our construction program, get through the economic recession of the last few years. But I would characterize some of these financial management strategies as unsustainable. These are not things we would want to be undertaking over the long term. So while we have some financial strategies that we need to transition out of, I'm confident that there is a path forward, but this path will require discipline and focus. UTA relies on sales tax for most of our funding, for operations, capital, for most of the things that we do. The current level of sales tax funding for UTA is between 0.4 and 0.6 of a cent for every dollar. If we compare that level of funding to what's in the region's long-range transportation plan that's developed by the cities and counties, that plan anticipates that we would have a full cent per dollar by 2017. So our current funding is about half of what was anticipated in the long-range plan. It doesn't look like we're going to get to a full cent by 2017, and so we're going, to, we're going to have to make some adjustments in what our expectations are for transit service and transit projects in this region. When we get to a full cent, we'll be on par with many of our peers, such as Denver, Dallas, Houston, 
who have been at a center more for many years. The next area of concern for me in our management of money is debt. When we completed the 2015 program, we accomplished all of the projects that were in the long-range plan up until 2030, and we got them done by 2013. The voters approved a tax in 2006 to accomplish all of that work, and we bonded against that tax. Now we have about $2 billion of debt. Now we did that knowingly, it was part of a plan, but $2 billion of debt is an important reality that we face today. We need to be disciplined and diligent about paying off that debt. So at some date in the not too distant future, we have significantly more resources available to us for service. We're going to have to borrow again two more times in the next 12 years before we really start paying down the principal on our debt burden. Our path forward will require us to be disciplined and focused in our management of the agency, and we'll be facing some tough choices. When I think back to my conversation with John on his way to work, John wants more and better service. He wants an earlier trip. While we can continue to work on refining our system and look for opportunities to streamline and use the resources we have to improve our service, ultimately it will take more resources to provide an extended span of coverage so that everyone who's going early in the morning or late in the evening has a way to get where they're going. There are three indicators right now of unsustainable financial management. Those indicators are borrowing or leasing for routine purchases, like buses. A second indicator would be if we're dipping into reserves for ongoing operating. It's like taking money out of your savings account to pay the bills. Fortunately, in our 2017 budget, we're not planning to do that. The third indicator is adding to the backlog of state of good repair maintenance items. And that means that we're not keeping up with the needs of our aging infrastructure and vehicles. And in fact, we're adding to a growing list of projects that need to be done in the future. I'm confident that we can set a path forward so that these strategies are not part of our financial management in the future. But it will take discipline and focus for us to get there. We've got to manage well with what we have. That means looking for opportunities to improve our service by reconfiguring, streamlining, combining our routes and service to make sure they meet the needs of the public but are as efficient and direct as possible. We need to manage our debt, refinance where we can, pay off early where we can, and make sure we're disciplined in working to pay that debt off. We're not keeping up with our state of good repair. So that's an area that in the next few years we want to focus on to make sure that we're not adding to the backlog. In fact, we're starting to chip away at it. So some of our initiatives going forward starting in 2017 include a review of our budget process and our budget to make sure that our resources and staffing are aligned with our priorities. We're going to scour our budget to find opportunities to redirect resources to make improvements in service with the resources we have. We're going to be using our new revenue from Prop 1 carefully to improve service in those communities. We will be carefully evaluating, in a transparent way, requests for our participation in capital expansion. The days of UTA being able to bankroll new projects and all communities had to do was get in line and be the next one are over. It doesn't mean we're hanging up the close sign. In fact, we want to be a partner, we want to be a helper, we want to apply all of our expertise to help these communities get what they want and what they need from the future. But doing so in a way that doesn't compromise our service or our ability to maintain what we have. Lastly, we want to make sure that we maintain our infrastructure, our vehicles, our facilities, that we don't let our system degrade, slow down, or have work stoppages because we've let things get so far out of hand we have to close down part of the system. Maintaining our system as we go along is the most efficient and least disruptive way to manage a transit network. So now let me talk about service. I heard on my listening tour that people want more and better service. I heard that UTA has strengths in service, that we provide a safe, reliable, and efficient service. And I've heard that we have opportunities to innovate, to provide alternative service models through partnerships with others. Service means everything from getting John to work on time, to providing information that allows customers to navigate the system, to making it easy to figure out how to plan your trip in the first place. UTA has several strengths in providing service. 
We're a safe operation. We're recognized in the industry for our performance and efficiency. We provide more miles of service for the dollar than most of our peers, according to the National Transit Database. We know that our riders want more service, more direct service, more service that's faster. We know that our customers are going to a lot more destinations than just work and school. They want better connections throughout the network and they want service that's earlier and later in the day. We have an opportunity to improve our customer service in the area of customer information. Most customers will interact with us first through our website and they'll use a mobile device to do so. We need to make sure that that works and is simple and convenient, easy to understand. We need to find ways to make it easier for our customers and for the public to interact with us, to give us suggestions and input for how to make the service better. We need to find ways to provide alternative services, to extend UTA's reach by partnering with human service agencies, nonprofits, and transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft. We need to find ways to make our fare system simpler, easier to understand, and easier to use. And we need to make sure our ticket vending machines are working reliably. So some of the initiatives for 2017 in the area of service include doing more and better with what we have. For example, the improvements that we have planned for ski service starting in December this year provide 35% more service with only 10% more resources. We can do the same kind of exercise in other parts of the system to provide a more direct, convenient service with the resources we have. Secondly, we have initiatives in 2017 to further use the new money available through Prop 1 to improve service in Weber, Davis, and Tooele County. We'll be working on simplifying and streamlining our fare system and improving the reliability of our ticket vending machines. And we'll be working to improve the customer experience with better signage and improved Wi-Fi on FrontRunner. So in closing, we have an exciting and positive future for this agency and for the communities we serve. With our focus on people, money, and service, we'll be able to face the challenges of the future. Lastly, what's been most rewarding for me is to talk to people who care about UTA. And so I'm going to make sure that listening is part of my habit, part of my routine week in and week out, because it's energizing for us to know how important UTA is to the communities we serve and to the people who ride us. I'm excited about a future where John can get to work on time, has a system that's easy to use, affordable and convenient. I know that people like that want to use transit every day. So going forward, I will keep a steady hand on the wheel. I'll make sure we keep our focus and our discipline in how we manage the organization. I'll continue to listen and learn from our stakeholders, customers, and I'll continue to look for ways to forge partnerships with people who can help us and who we can help accomplish their mission. So thanks for all you do. I'm proud to be part of an organization that's made up of such professional, dedicated, and hardworking employees. People who go out of their way to provide a positive customer experience. There are lots of parts of the UTA organization and every little bit matters. Whether it's in maintenance or supply chain or operations or customer service, all of those pieces have to work well together for our customers to have a good experience. And I'm happy to hear from our customers that they recognize the hard work and dedication that our employees have. Our future is bright. I'm optimistic about our future because of the employees we have at UTA. And I'm working hard to make sure we align our organization to support our customers and the employees who serve our customers. Thanks again for all you do.